2022. The Tusculum Pioneers and the Wingate Bulldogs for the 25th time from Irwin Belk Stadium. It was homecoming in Wingate, North Carolina. Hello everyone, I'm Brian State, and joined by the coach, Jerry Odom. And welcome into the Pioneer Football Show. For the Pioneers going into this contest against the 10th ranked team in the country, we're looking to extend a streak, a winning streak on the road, but haven't defeated a road opponent who had been ranked since the 2001 season. Moorhead State had been ranked at that particular time of the year. Last time the Pioneers defeated a ranked opponent was the 12th ranked Wingate Bulldogs. And it was back here in 2017 when the Pioneers upset Wingate and ruined their perfect season. This particular season, the Pioneers were looking to go in for some type of conference supremacy. As the game kicked off at six o'clock, before the game began, we learned that the Lenore Ryan Bears were defeated, the Newberry Wolves were defeated, and the Carson Newman Eagles were defeated all before we got underway. We welcome in the coach, Jerry Odom. The Pioneers didn't necessarily get that W done because of uh, whatever it is. We're going to watch it. But whatever it was for this team, what I loved seeing was the explosiveness on offense that the Pioneers were able to display against the Bulldogs. Yeah, we did a great job on offense, uh, creating big plays. Um, I was extremely happy with uh, you know us you know, taking shots when we needed to, taking what was there when we needed to. Um, I thought we played well enough on offense to win. Uh, I didn't do a good enough job on the defensive side of the ball, calling the game, couldn't get in the rhythm, did a bad job. Uh, when it comes down to that, uh, we didn't play well enough in the first half. Uh, you can't be nine for nine. Somebody can't be nine for nine on third downs. And, uh, you know, we come in 10th in the country going into the game on third downs. They go nine for nine, end up. 14 for 19 on the game, that, that that lost the game right there. It has nothing to do with anything else. I, I got to do a better job on uh, getting my guys to understand the, the importance of third down. Yeah, rushing, uh, you know, for them, we knew that Peoples was going to be a hard runner. Clark come in and, and ran the ball hard. I think that was the, for me, we only surprised the the ability for them to run the football somewhere. Yeah, you know, 50 times, 178 yards. I mean, it sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. But 50 times... Yeah. because you didn't get off the field on third down uh, a lot of those times. So 50 times, uh, I mean, that's 3.4 yards per carry. That's not too bad against a team like Wingate, who's a, a good running football team. I, you know, their, their two backs are big big guys, 215, 20 pounds, and uh, they did a nice job against us. I mean, you know, they did a better job. I got, you know, I got outcoached, and, and that's how I, I look at that. And uh, I got to do a better job as the head coach, as the defense coordinator, as everything. So, uh, you know, our kids play hard enough. They played hard enough to win. I was very, very proud of the way they competed. Uh, I just got to do a better job moving forward and getting the little things done and coaching up situational football. We work on these things a lot, knowing where, what we are situationally, understanding where we are on the field, time on the field, what we're trying to get accomplished. Uh, those are things we got to get better at. But very, very proud overall of the way the kids play it. I just got to do a better job. We'll take a look at the highlights. It's a Pioneer football team that takes on the Wingate Bulldogs for the uh, 25th time. As coaches, we start this. This will be our second offensive series and really come out. And, and Ivan, I think, really played with a lot of confidence. And he found his, his top targets as, as, as the wide receivers. Yeah, I, I think they did a nice job. Uh, you know, RPO right here. Thought we could have gotten a horse collar tackle right there since so they pulled him down from behind. Didn't call it. Said they that. that when I asked, they said that didn't pull him down. That it wasn't the cause of him making the tackle. Nice job here. A little scramble play. Uh, throws it deep. Heck of a play by Parham. I mean, you know, you give him an opportunity, he, he's going to make plays. And uh, Justice uh, continue, uh, continues to uh, really impress me with the way he plays the game and how hard he plays. Uh, get down there, you know, get a nice little run right here into the boundary. Well blocked. Courtney walks in for a touchdown, so we're able to tie it up 7-7. And that on the day for Ivan Corbin, he was 15 of 27, 286 yards and a long of 61, and that was the uh, highlight reel long of 61. The Pioneers are still down at this particular moment, 10 to 7, 10 to 7, but uh, starting a drive as we begin this second quarter. Yeah, good play, play to Reggie out there to, to convert a third down, get a little bit of pressure here. Uh, great catch. Uh, who was that? On the, that was Burke. Yeah, Tyler Burke. A heck of a one-handed catch right there. Uh, got to do a better job not getting pressure. We kind of jumped outside a little bit. Uh, got to be sitting down. Um, 
snap the football, get them offside. They don't call it. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought they were off. But, you know, you're always going to take a deep shot. We end up getting a deep shot to Anderson uh, for the touchdown. And, uh, you know, really happy for that. Uh, that's just something that you do. If you get them off, offside, you, you're going to take a shot. And we thought we did, and we didn't. <laughs> yeah. Seven, worked out anyway. It worked out. And it was third down. Interestingly enough, if you don't complete that, it's going to be fourth down. Right. Here for the Pioneers responding after a 17-14 lead for the Bulldogs. Yeah, well-blocked play. Jarvis Jones uh, gets the ball. Gets vertical, and once you get out in front with Jarvis as, as fast as he is, uh, you know, probably ran 150 yards for a 100-yard return, but, uh, you know, did a great job and, and well blocked for, by the kickoff return team. It's the longest kickoff return in school history. It broke Justin Houston's 99-yard return. He set against Wingate in 2013. Yeah, nice scramble here on third down to be able to get a first down right here. Uh, you know, I'm not really sure why they waved this off. Uh, you know, you definitely hit him out of bounds. But uh, after a conversation, they decided he didn't. So uh, we didn't get the extra 15 yards. And uh, then I believe this, draw, this drive later on stalled a little bit later uh, when they fell down and acted like they were. <laughs> they were you they were, were going hurt. fast. You were going yeah, fast. We were, we were trying to go fast. It happens. Great job here on a scramble. Ends up getting a first down on a, on a third and five right here. Uh, had the slant open, but, you know, was able to make the play. Uh, get a little, you know, flare screen out here for a first down uh, to the running back. I think that's, uh, you know, Gomelian right there. Then we come in, try to kick the field goal. Ben's got to do a better job in there, and we get it blocked. And uh, I think that's when they fell down. We kind of stalled. Uh, didn't end up getting any points out of that drive, which is disappointing. Defense comes up in the second half as we have moved there. The Bulldogs are uh, driving. They're leading, or just before the half, I should say. One of those, <sighs> if they had gotten that one, then yeah. it may take this yeah, off. Yeah, that hurt because, you know, they that was right before the half. And then I, they said it was good. <laughs> you know, it was close. Uh, so it must have been good. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we got to make those plays. Right. You know, John's got to make that play. Good coverage, good protection. Got to make the play. They come back. You know, uh, you know, we're able to punch the ball in here. We tried to strip it out, but I believe he was in. I think that was a good call by the officials. He definitely got in before the ball came out. Uh, we got to be better uh, getting set up, on, you know, on those plays. Uh, like I said, I thought in the second half we did play a little bit better on defense. Uh, get a little scramble play here, and we're able to get him down. I think it's Ryan McIntyre comes down from the backside. Took away the, what they wanted from their uh, – from their first read, and we're able to come back. Then uh, Day Day, Dejan White does a heck of a job coming through, uh, strips the guy. Uh, there's a scramble for the ball. Ball pops up. We end up coming out with it. Heck of a job by Day Day. I thought he played very, very well in the second half. Continues to get better. He'd been hurt a little bit, had a calf strain, a little quad strain. Uh, it's finally starting to get healthy, and I think you're going to see him playing better and better and better as the year goes along. 34-21 right now. The Pioneers needed that stop as the offense comes back out, and here's Derek Wright. Yeah, get a little bubble screen out there. Derek Wright, really good blocking on the perimeter. Uh, I think that's Sweeper and Parham on the perimeter doing a good job blocking. Thought our wide receivers played well uh, blocking. Come back with a little zone read action right here for about an eight- or nine-yard gain, <clears throat> you know, with, uh, with Ivan reading the end. Uh, Art releasing uh, the tight end for that. Then uh, come back, get a nice throw and catch wide open. Again, I think that's Parham on the out cut right here. Take what they get. And then his helmet comes off. We got to bring in Trey. And uh, we run a little uh, back out of the backfield play with triple crossers and end up getting uh, Gomillion in the, in the flat for the touchdown to, to break it to a six point game. 34 28 for the Pioneers. That capped a nine play. Fifth, uh, 52-yard drive. It took just over four minutes. The thing was, Wingate was on the field, it seemed like, for an eternity and finally forced them to uh, start punting the football. So the Pioneers with a chance down 34-28, to 28, some eight minutes left in the football game. Yeah, really good protection here. Then Ivan does a good job taking off, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Right here. I, I'm doesn't, sorry. I just That's targeting. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, doesn't get the first down. Uh, thought it was going to be called. Didn't get called. Uh, you, yeah, is what it is. you punt, and Wingate drives once again, and again your defense has to come up with the play uh, again, down just to score, yeah. and uh, and get that opportunity from Nelson Luis. Yeah, we blitz right here. Nelson does a good job on the game off the backside of the blitz, he strips the ball. I think Day Day comes up with the football right there, so that was a big play. 
uh, obviously in the game gave us a chance to, to, you know, have a chance to get the ball and, and, and tie the thing up or go ahead by one. So the Pioneers will have it, I believe, now just under six minutes to play in the football game as it is right now. The Pioneers start this offensive series, and it's just it's, – you, there's no panic right now, and I just love the what the composure from from Corbin, and he's got a speedster on the outside. Yeah, Tyler Jarrus, a heck of a catch by Tyler, uh, lays out for it, ends up catching the ball at the five yard line. Uh, r- really good throw and catch, great protection too. I mean, had all day to throw. I thought our offensive line, for the most part, did a really really good, nice job. Again, two weeks in a row, they play another great D line this week. Uh, then we come back with the uh, with the zone read, makes the guy miss, able to get in. So now. With the extra point, we're up one with about uh, three and a half, four minutes left to go in the game. And then you're wondering, did we leave too much time on the clock? Well, the Pioneer defense would get a stop and force a field goal attempt, which would be good. So it would go up 37 to 35 in this in this game. Shaw Crocker, by the way, was 17 of 29, 205 yards on the afternoon with two touchdowns. So with a minute 49 left, the Pioneers begin a drive. And uh, what could have been? Yeah, just just over, you know, just a little bit out in front of sweep. Uh, had a chance right there to make the play, uh, but it was a little bit overthrown. You know, we got to get him more opportunities, but uh, you know that was a good one. And then this, you know, this hurt a little bit. I'm still not sure <laughs> why this wasn't called, but it wasn't uh, a call to pass interference. So, uh, you know, we were able to you know figure out a way to get get a first down off a of scramble right here, I believe. Uh, and, no, I'm sorry, a nice throw and catch later. We get a scramble from first, and then we get a throw and catch to Bryce Moore. Great catch. So now we're on the 18-yard line. we got about 20 seconds left. The goal was to try to, you know, maybe get a little bit closer for the guy to get pressure. Uh, he gets outside of the pressure, and, and I think he never saw the corner right here coming off. And I was just yelling, throw it away, throw it away, because we still had a chance to get one. And uh, they ended up picking it off and uh, – and going to the house and, and ended up winning the game, uh, you know, by uh, by eight points. Pioneers, 381 yards of total offense. Wingate with 426 again on the day. And it was the number of plays, 80 plays for the Bulldogs and 56 for the Pioneers. A uh, end of game pick six to uh, end the contest to make it a 43-35 to 35 contest. And the Bulldogs continue uh, – to get that win and they stay unbeaten on the year to open up the season at four and oh uh, there was a flag thrown on this play at the end of it and was picked up but you see what everyone else sees uh right there at the very end so unsure why that was also picked up you said you know that you couldn't get off the field on third downs and i think that was the issue the defense i don't think was even tired 40 minutes uh time of possession for the bulldogs to the Pioneers 19, but you were explosive. And I just love, that's what I think I was more impressed with about the defense. They, they're out there 40 minutes, but they didn't seem as if they had, had let down. Yeah, any. but I mean, you know, we got to get off the field. I mean, that's, that's embarrassing. I mean, at 14 and 19, that's embarrassing. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no offense to anybody out there. I did a bad job. I got to do a better job. We got to do a better job on defense. We're, that's not us. Right. And I'm unhappy. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say that to, 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 to be quite frank and I've got to do a better job I got to do a better job teaching situations I got to do a better job with how we execute what I call I've got to do a better job of what I call and we've got to get our behinds off the field I mean that's really what it comes down to we had it even if you're even if they're 10 of 19 right even if they're 9 of 19 you're, you can live with that but that's going to give your offense seven, eight, ten more minutes of, of opportunity to score points. Right. And we didn't do that, and that's my fault. I'm, I run that side of the football, uh, give Wingate all the credit in the world. They did a great job of executing. I thought their quarterback was outstanding on third down, but we we, we did not do some things well on third down. And I did not do some thir- things on third down. The buck stops with me, so it's my fault. So I have to do a better job, and uh, we're going to go back to the drawing board, and we're going to keep working, and we're going to keep chopping wood. And like I said earlier, um, I go to war with this team anytime. They never quit. They never. They don't have any quit in them. They're going to battle no matter what. And uh, we got another tough opponent this week. I mean, it's just been one of those deals where you know the way our schedule fell, we knew this this is going to be a tough stretch of of games. Uh, you know, through it when you got three three good football teams you're playing, and we just got to find a way to win this next one. 
Some of the notables for this Pioneer team, Tycorian Brown set a uh, career best 15 tackles on the day. Jermaine Witherspoon, career best 13. Jordan Smith uh, finishing with 10 on the day. And Day-Day, uh, Dejavon White finishing with 7 on the, uh, on the evening for the Pioneers defensively. Um, again, a defense that, that just seemed to never tire on this day. And just a, a final note, you threw the flag for a reason. You saw something. Stand your ground especially when you're out of bounds for two yards. It is okay for it to be a personal foul late hit. It is okay for the guy who gets tackled attempting to take the catch to get the 15-yard pass interference penalty. If I had shown up and done that poor of a job, I would not have been paid, period. It is okay to throw that flag. We're back to talk a little bit more about the Lenore Ryan Bears when we return after this on the Pioneer Football Show. Emily has been working with Angles for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying a produce as a local farmer. Uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help and we love what we do. And Ingalls is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are and it's in our blood. God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes, then you're, you're in. <laughs> just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people and Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. I'm Shane Pierce and this is my Ingalls story. Pioneers take on the Lenoride Bears this Saturday. Homecoming between the Bricks at Moret Stadium. A rematch of the Spring Conference Championship game that was held in Hickory, North Carolina, where the Tusculum Pioneers were victorious on that day. It is an LR team that's coming off a loss to the UVA Wise Cavaliers. Yeah. And I think Wise, you know, I think a lot of people are showing why there's so much parity in this yeah. league. And it's a lot of the guys up front, the defensive line. What the LR Bears do have as well is a very solid defensive oh, front. Oh, yeah, they're really good. I mean, uh, I mean, they're, they're outstanding up front on the defensive line. Um, you know, really like 0 and 56. You know, I'm sorry, uh, the name escapes me right now. Luba. Luba is 0. <laughs> yeah, Luba, Dan Luba. And they're ballers. I mean, there's no other way to say it. They're very well coached, very well. Good football team. I mean, they're a good football team. I don't think they played their best the other day. They're going to, you know, probably come out and try to make a statement, obviously, on us. Uh, we're homecoming again. I guess I'm just going to roll in on my float since I'm Mr. Homecoming now. And, uh, and uh, you know, we play at 1 o'clock, and uh, they're gonna, they got a good football team. I mean, their quarterback is outstanding. He's a great player. They have a receiver. Uh, number one, that is as good as anybody in the league. He's an NFL prospect. Uh, you know, you know, 82 can really run for them. Their little running back, number three, is is got is averaging 150 yards a game. I mean, they're a good football team. I think they've lost to Newberry like we have on a very close contested game. And then this week, got to give Wise credit. Wise did a really, really nice job in what they did game plan wise and gave himself the chance to to win that football game, and and they did. And, but I know that we're going to get LR's best, and hopefully they're going to get our best because right. we got two teams that are, I think, good football teams that are going to go out there and uh, and and slug it out there on Saturday uh, between the bricks. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of much respect for that that whole unit. Uh, I think their coach is a, a solid football coach. They do a great job of, uh, of game planning you. They give you a lot of different formations, a lot of different looks on both sides of the ball. Their third down package is as good as anybody you're going to see. Um, we just got to go do a great job. Uh, you know, everybody at this point's a little beat up. You yeah. know, us, them, probably everybody. Um, we just got to find ways to uh, we got to find ways to to uh, win this football game. And hopefully, we get some guys back that were beat up last week. Um, but we'll just have to see. Bears have fallen to two and two on the year, one and two in the league, and uh, a lot of teams looking to stay in that upper echelon like the Pioneers this coming Saturday. So you can join us for coverage. We'll have that from the radio side of things from 95.5 FM. You can join us with coverage beginning at 12 o'clock. We'll kick it off 
at 1 o'clock, and the Lenore Ron Bayer is also providing a live video feed of the contest. You can also check that out through TuscalumPioneers.com. Go to the football schedule. When you see the Lenore Ryan team, you'll see the live video link set up just for you there. Of course, our radio coverage with the live audio will be there at the schedule as well. As always, thanks to everyone behind the scenes. For Doug Page, he's Pioneer Coach Jerry Odom. I'm Brian Staden. Until Saturday versus the Bears, go Pioneers.